Hello and welcome to Agri History. Today we'll talk about the domestication of sheep. Goat and sheep domestication played a very important role in human history. This process of domestication for sheep and goat was one of the keystones that led to the agricultural revolution. Based on current genetic and archaeological evidence, it is likely that 9,000 years ago, sheep were domesticated in the Middle East and the Near East. The probable ancestor of the sheep is called the Mofloon. In the Near East, it is likely that the European Morfloon was the main ancestor to that lineage of sheep. As for the Asian breeds, the ancestry is sort of unknown. Based on genetic evidence, two different hypotheses have been made on the origin of sheep. The first model suggests that the two different lineages of sheep were bred from two different subspecies of Morfloon. The second hypothesis suggests that there's more than two lineages of domesticated sheep, and these lineages came to be when the previous lineage was crossbred with wild Malfloons. Regardless of their origins, it is known that there is at least two domestication events for sheep. Next, we'll talk about the different breeds of sheep. First, we'll talk about the wool sheep. The first wool breed we'll talk about is the blue-faced Leicester. This breed is an English long wool type that originated near Hexton in the county of Northumberland, England, in the early 1900s. Its exact pedigree is unknown. Next, we'll talk about the California Red. This breed was made in the 1970s by Dr. Glenn Spurlock. This breed was made by crossbreeding the Tunis breed of sheep with the Barbados sheep in Davis, California. Other researchers took these crossbreeds and made them into a new breed entirely, called the California Red. The next breed on our hit list is called the Ile de France. This breed was made by crossbreeding English Leicesters with Rambulet sheep. And as time went on, Matchab Barino sheep were also used to improve the breed further. This breed is widespread in France and was introduced into Britain in the 1970s. The next breed on our hit list is called a Caracool. This breed may be the oldest of the breeds of sheep we know of. In fact, we have found Caracool type sheep carved in Babylonian temples. We have also found the remnants of Persian lambskin as early as 1400 BC. Based on current information, this breed was used for milk, meat, tallow, wool, and strong fiber. Due to the harsh conditions where it was bred, this breed of sheep is very hardy to many locations that are desert-like in nature. The next breed on our hit list would be the Merino sheep. This breed is known for its high quality wool and was bred near the beginning of the 12th century in Spain. These sheep were imported to Australia where through selective breeding, the wool quality was improved further. The next breed on our hit list is called the Lincoln Sheep Breed. This breed was made by crossbreeding Leicester sheep with coarse native sheep of Lincolnshire. This was primarily done to improve the meat quality of the resulting progeny, but a great improvement in wool quality was also a useful benefit. Many groups tinkered with this breed, but the Dudding family of Lincolnshire was the largest impact breeder due to that family tinkering with the breed for 175 years. The next breed on our hit list is called Romney. This breed was made to improve upon a pre-existing breed called Romney Marsh. This was achieved through crossbreeding with Leicester breeds of sheep. This breed is made to be able to survive in a marsh environment. Now on to our last wool sheep breed we'll talk about. This breed is called a sheet lamb. This breed is over 1,000 years old. This breed was likely brought to the Sheetland Islands by Vikings, but other than that, the exact breeding practices are unknown. But to move on to the meat breeds of sheep. The first meat breed we'll talk about is called a Dorset. Although the information on the origin of the Dorset is somewhat on the low side, what evidence we do have suggests 
that during the war between Spain and England, crossbreeds between the horned sheep of Wales and merino sheep were made, and it's likely that a dorset was made through this crossbreeding process. The next breed on our hit list will be the Hampshire breed of sheep. This breed was made through the merging of many primordial breeds of sheep in southern England. This breed was further improved via crossbreeding with the Coltswold sheep and the Southdown sheep. In England, this is considered one of the best sheep for meat production. The next breed on our hit list is called a Cheviot sheep. This breed was bred from Long Hill sheep from the Cheviot Hills near the English border to Scotland. It was later improved by a crossbreeding with Leicesters, which increased the size and the length of the fleece. In Scotland itself, this breed was crossbred with a black-faced breed of some sort, leading to the black-faced strain of this breed. The next breed on our hit list would be the Ridu Arcot. The breeding process for this new breed of sheep began in 1966. It was started by the Canadian government organization, Agriculture Canada. The goal of this research was to make a sheep breed that could reproduce rapidly. This breed was created by crossbreeding Finnish land race, Southdown, East Frisian, Suffolk, Leicester, North Country, Cheviot, Romulet, Dorset, Horn, Shropshire, and Elle de France all together to create a brand new breed of sheep. Thanks to the crossbreeding, we now have a breed that has 40% Finnish land race, 20% Suffolk, 14% East Frisian, 9% Shropshire, 8% Dorset, and the remaining 9% is a mixture of Border Leicester, Cheviot, Romulet, and Cordell. This breed is traditionally used for crossbreeding. The next breed on our hit list is called the Romanov. We do not know much about its origins, but we do know that it does crossbreed very well with other breeds of sheep. The next breed on our hit list is called the Southdown. This breed was developed in the late 1700s and early 1800s. It was imported into Pennsylvania in the 1820s. During this time, John Elman and Jonas Webb made further improvements to this breed. The next breed on our hit list would be the Suffolk. This breed was made by crossbreeding Southdown sheep with Norfolk horned sheep. It was recognized as a new breed in 1810. The next breed on our hit list is the Texel. This breed was made in the Netherlands in the early 19th century. It was further improved by crossbreeding with Lincoln and Leicester sheep. This happened in the mid 1800s. Now on to the milk breeds. The first milk we'll talk about is called the East Frisian. The East Frisians are a strain of the breed known as the Frisians. This strain comes from Germany, while the Western strain comes from the Netherlands. The next breed on our hit list is the Lacoon. This is an ancient breed of milk sheep bred by Neolithic farmers who set up shop in the plains of the Mediterranean coast 4,000 to 6,000 years ago. By the mid-19th century, the breed was improved through crossbreeding with the Larzac, Camers, the Caucus, and the Rodez breeds of sheep. Due to the high-quality milk, the genetics of this breed have been studied more than any other milk breed of sheep in the world. The next breed on our hit list, the last sheep breed we'll talk about, is called the Awasi. This breed was made through natural selection and selective breeding, to become the highest milk producing breed in the Middle East. The average amount of milk you can get from one sheep of this breed is 650 pounds per lactation. This is big in comparison to the average sheep breed which produces 100 to 200 pounds per lactation. This concludes season, season 3 of Agri History. Stay tuned for season 4. Cheers! <laughs>